development. Mr. Vice President, Foreign Minister welcomes a report of OHCHR on Sri Lanka. The government has failed to implement most of its commitments under Resolution 30-1. Draft legislation for three of the four promised transitional justice mechanisms are not publicly available and the one that saw some steps taken in the Office of the Missing Persons is still not operational. The Prevention of Terrorism Act and its draconian provisions still remain and no meaningful steps have been taken towards holding perpetrators of international crimes accountable. Dissatisfaction has led to continuous public protests for over a year by families of the disappeared and communities whose lands are still occupied by the military in the North and the East. As noted in the report, key preconditions for transitional justice remain unfulfilled. Reports of assaults, Threat, death threats, surveillance and harassment of human rights defenders and victims of violations continue. A new draft law to regulate, supervise and inspect NGOs grants policing and judicial powers to an NGO secretariat under a minister, severely restricting freedom of association and human rights defenders. In a context of impunity for past attacks on minorities, fresh attacks on Muslims this month saw mosques, homes and businesses destroyed and several injured. Police had watched by and ignored early warnings and had themselves assaulted civilians. Though arrests have been made belatedly, there are doubts about persecutions or convictions. We endorse the High Commissioner's call for application of universal jurisdiction, but it is also import imperative that this Council intensifies and does not reduce its scrutiny of Sri Lanka till March 2019 and beyond. Thank you.